Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to prepare a proper 3-5% to red cell suspension for blood banking testing. Alright, let's get started! So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a proper red blood cell suspension for everyday blood banking testing. Uh, so uh, why do we do this? So red cell suspensions are used in basically everything um, in blood bank. Um, so it's uh, used in um, primarily within the ABO blood typing. Um, so we can't just put straight red blood cells into reagents. Um, we, we need to dilute it with saline first. So the proper suspension is usually around three to five percent. I usually try to shoot for three percent uh, with it. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So what I've done here is I've gotten my supplies ready. So first I have a properly identified patient sample. So conveniently it's named Lab Rat. So this is actually a full bottomy student of mine uh, that donated their blood for this, proce this procedure. Um, so it's properly spun, so this is the plasma on top and the red blood cells here down at the bottom. And of course, it's in a correct tube. So you can use um, an EDTA specimen, either lavender top or pink top for this. So we have a properly labeled specimen. Now we also have some glass tubes. So technically you only really need one um, to do this, uh, but I'm gonna show you what happens if you put too many red blood cells in or two less red blood cells in, and then of course a correct one. So this one is labeled lab rat, and then I just put RBCs or RBC on it. So they're all labeled the same. Okay, so I have that, disposable pipettes, my blood bank saline, and I'm ready to go. Um, so what I wanna do first is take a disposable pipette. I'm gonna move this blood bank saline out of the way. I'm trying to do this while filming is a little odd. Um, so I'm gonna take the cap off of my blood bank tube and I'm going to take my pipette and put it down through the plasma, okay? And I'm not sucking on the pipette yet. Like I'm not uh, squeezing it yet. I'm gonna go down. And right now at this point in time is where I'm gonna start squeezing it. So not up here, but up here. And I'm gonna keep it squeezed and put it down into the patient's red blood cells, okay? And then I'm gonna slowly unsqueeze it or kind of release it on the bulb. And you see how it has taken up the red blood cells and not the plasma? So this first one here, this is the correct way to do it. Um, I just put a drop or two in there, okay? So what I'll do here is create them incorrectly, but I'm not gonna show you how to do that um, because that's not the, the proper way to do it. Um, so, I'm going to take this specimen. So if we were just to use this straight red blood cells in our reactions, it's gonna give us way too heavy of a reaction. It's, it's not gonna be working, working properly. So what I wanna do now to make this suspension is I'm gonna take this blood bank saline. We cannot use water, all right? It has to be uh, specific blood bank saline. Um, and the reason for that is water will lice or break open these red blood cells. So I'm going to take this tip of the um, the pipette, or I'm sorry, the uh, blood bank saline uh, bottle, and I'm not going to go into the tube, okay, because that can contaminate this tip of it, um, but I'm going to squirt some water, I'm sorry, saline in, <laughs> in it. Okay, let's take a look. And then I'm going to gently mix it up. All right, I could use just a tiny bit more saline. So you can always add more saline if need be. You can't really take any out. There we go. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to mix it up. This is a beautiful suspension, probably about 3%. And a way to tell whether or not you have the correct red blood cell suspension is by taking um, your A1 or B cells or um, your screening cells um, that have uh, red blood cell suspensions already made and comparing the color. So this one specifically is A1, but you can use whatever one you want. A1, B, check cells, or the screening cells is fine. Even panel cells if you'd like. Um, this is about the same color as this one. So this is how you know you've made a proper uh, red cell suspension. So this is the correct way to do it. And what I'm going to do is stop the video, make them incorrectly, and then show you kind of how they look when they're they're wrong. All right, one moment. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I've incorrectly made red cell suspensions for you. So again, this is the correct one. This is a proper 3% red cell suspension. It looks great. This is good. Now this one here is one that there's not enough blood in it. You see how light it is? This is not efficient. This would give you incorrect results um, in your um, the blood typing. So this would be too much. So what do you do in this particular case? Like, what? how would you make this correct? You just have to dump it out. No, not necessarily. You can actually just use um, another pipette and get some more blood in the sample and just put a little bit more blood um, in it uh, to make it to this correct. But you see the difference here. Way too light, perfect. Way too light, perfect. All right, now... I've made one that's way too thick. You see how dark this one is? So this was caused by just not putting enough saline in and putting way too much red blood cells. So you can see how it compares to the regular one. So this is the good one and this is the one that's too thick. You see how dark it is? So how would you correct this? Well, you can take, you know, maybe like split this in half. So take half of this out and discard it and then add more saline to it. You could do that or you could just add more saline um, to this particular tube. I personally think that this is such, such a dark or such a thick sample that even if you fill the saline all the way to the top, it still probably wouldn't be in that good percentage range. Um, so honestly, I'd probably just um, pipette out half of the sample, discard it, and then just add more saline to it, and that should do it. But you definitely don't wanna use a suspension like this, and you definitely don't wanna use a sp suspension like this. You only want to use one like this. All right, hopefully this helped you. If you like this video, go ahead and t uh, hit the like button. And also please remember to subscribe to my channel uh, for more laboratory educational content. Um, if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments. And also if you have um, any um, suggestions on what uh, techniques or videos you'd like me to add, you can leave those in the comments too. Alrighty, until next time.